All right, fuck <laughs> it. Welcome to another episode of No Silicone. Keeping it raw. And keeping it real, baby. With your boy Feeling Hendrix. And ATJ Fitness. Let's go, man. Hey, what's good, people, man? So, um, in this series, man, I figured, you know, there's a lot of things happening on a day-to-day basis with, you know, young men, young women of our generation that we don't generally talk about. And I figured, you know, we'd introduce a series whereby we kind of create a platform, an open platform that mm-hmm. allows... Yeah. Um, people from our generation above and you know below as well to talk about things that are actually going on on a day-to-day basis but like you know real things yeah you feel me like we said man no silicone so kind of keeping it real like things actually affect us things that affect us you know in our personal life mm. things that affect us in our work relationships you know you know in in any context just in life like we're all going through something basically you know yeah yeah so yeah, yeah. Just so shed some light on that fact just shed some light and maybe i think with the whole basis of this is like if we can you know i guess talk about our stories talk about our experiences we could potentially bring in other people they've yeah. had experiences mm-hmm. and stories and could potentially help you know the wider public and stuff like that yeah yeah i mean um because you know jay jay you know his 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 lifestyle his life story is pretty interesting yeah i mean the things that he kind of goes through on the day-to-day <laughs> the things that he's been through in the past yeah and um likewise yeah you know i mean so i guess the whole idea is to shed light on these things and um let people know that it's okay yeah you feel me it's mm-hmm. okay um so if i have an introduction my last post on socials on instagram my last post was basically saying that you are not alone right um and the whole point is to highlight the idea that like i just said we, everyone is going through some shit yeah, I mean, everyone's going through some shit. Like, you'll, you'll go past someone with the biggest smile on the face, but when they mm. go back home, they're breaking down. Yeah. You feel me? You go past, you know, a guy that's got the hardest look on road, mm. um, looks untouchable, unbreakable, but inside him, he's going through the deepest depression. Mm, mm, you mm, feel mm, me? Mm. And I just kind of want to let people know that, yo, we are not alone. Everyone's going through some shit. And like I said, life is like a conundrum. Life is like a vortex. Mm. It's like an abyss. It's so deep. Like, there's so many things that people don't understand and everyone's just trying to figure it out yeah yeah 100 percent. everyone's trying to figure it out man mm, yeah mm, i mean mm. um jay man what about you man what, what are your experiences like on a day-to-day <laughs> basis because when people see atj fitness on socials yeah i mean you're mr you know mr fit body mr i'm not even that active like that anymore but maybe not right also, now also guys sorry i'm a bit raspy because um i'm still getting over the flu you know okay. so excuse my um the dryness but um yeah, yeah um <laughs> The day-to-day life is like, um, I wouldn't say we, you know what, we do put on brave faces, but one thing about me is um, uh, I like to, I like to, what's the word for it? I like to be in my situation. I never ignore it sort of thing. So it might Mm -hmm. seem like I might be being negative, but I'm just prepared for the worst at all times okay. so i'm just always being aware what do you mean by you know you're you're, you're in your situation as what in like a lot of people when they're going through stuff they tend to just avoid it instead right. of hitting it head on okay yeah so my thing is i like to address it and always be in it so i know so i can, can control it okay you can't control it if you're not involved in it okay so that's the, my way I, I go in it okay so you basically don't run away from your problems no nah, i can't so okay a lot of people <laughs> Sometimes I might take a day off yeah. from it, but like you really you should always address your issues. I hear that. Okay, let's be, let's be a bit more specific then, yeah. because yeah, we're talking about coping mechanisms in terms of yeah. times of stress, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, fine. So, um, for instance, um, you're going through a job situation, right? right? Let's say you're going through a job situation. Mm-hmm. Um, you're having dramas at work and stuff like that. I mean, a lot of people that, that you know, they'll leave work and yeah. then you know they'll leave work with a brave face, mm. act like everything's okay, yeah. and then they'll go home complain. Or they might not even say anything. They'll be internalizing all that all that negative energy. Yeah, I mean, um, how do you tend to deal with like you know, I guess you know, a, a, a dickhead manager or a, a, a bad boss? <laughs> me, or me to be honest, yeah. I always, um, I always take notes, and I always, what do you mean? I always have a, a backup file just in case I need to give. Oh, it to like me. that dude from Recess. I don't play. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't play because, as you know, your managers are doing just as much dirty stuff that you're doing. Word. So it's always good worse. to keep a watchful eye and. Uh, uh, a hand that writes yeah? right 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 at all times you right, know right. mental memory is not going to save you all the time so always right. have the notes days and the times right so that's what i do so i'm always prepared i don't i don't what i realize is like being a real man is not um you realize that um you ain't got nothing to lose out here right. especially your job bro you can get another one tomorrow it might not be in the same field or whatever it is yeah. but you can get you can get money tomorrow okay it's not really a stress like that so if you're gonna fire me you're gonna fire me but my thing is i'm gonna go with my head high okay so manager's pissing you off manager's getting on your nerves um your colleagues are, are being douchebags and stuff you're basically saying 
like, do you address them head on? Yeah, I, I do do that, but that gets okay. me into situations a lot of the time. I end up being yeah. in a place where I'm not liked, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm cool with all the guy with the attitude, but I'm cool with that because okay. I still get my respect. Okay, so if you go in there being a bum lick or you're mm. a problem starter, like um, always snitching, then mm. the manager's never going to respect you. But a lot of people in this life are bum lickers and mm. suck ups, mm. but your manager don't rate you, and you do, your mm. manager does not rate that. Mm. He might bring you up in position, but he doesn't rate you. Just remember yeah. that. But my thing, yeah, with that, I just um, I always address with the managers the way I want to do it. I do it anyhow I feel like it. Okay. At the end of the day, it's just a job. I hear that. I hear that. I mean, I, I guess it's easy to say it's just a job for someone that has your your your, your self belief in it. Yeah, I mean, it's but, not easy to say it though because yeah. I still got a lot riding because I got a son. Mm. Uh -huh. <laughs> so it's not whatever I earn is just for me. Uh -huh. I got responsibility. Right. Not just paying a, a, a rent or something. I got right. someone so that, that, yeah. that being said, like if you know that, you know, you keeping it, I guess you confronting any issues, yeah. let's say the manager's being a douchebag or just mm. trying to take the piss mm. and you confront them and you know that that could potentially jeopardize your job. Mm. How do you make that decision of, you yeah. know, okay, I could lose my job and that could affect my son versus, Strategy. you know, my, versus Strategy. my respect. Strategy always. Yeah, I don't yeah. just go in there hell blazing okay <laughs> I'm, I'm a very well calculated guy yeah. at the end of the day many times i could have got finished out, yeah, <laughs> out here yeah. but it's just planning you know what i'm saying the right okay. time and there's always the right time and the right place for everything okay you know okay um, that's that's the way I, that's the way i do it okay that's interesting then because okay so i can imagine someone who doesn't have your personality trait who doesn't know how to address or who doesn't like confrontation mm. you feel me the i love that yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that. It's fun. Do you know what I'm saying? It's fun. You enjoy confrontation. Yeah, I'm not talking about I love fighting or nothing. I'm not yeah, interested yeah, yeah. in that. I mean as in I'm prepared to like debate and argue because okay. I've always got a point ready. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because he's you know everyone's doing dirt in the workplace. Right. Everybody knows yeah, yeah. that. Oh, but some people are not watching enough. Yeah. So that's what it is. But that that's not really I don't really get affected with work issues like that. Yeah. To be honest. So yeah. Okay. That's interesting. I think, you know, we're we're different. I'm um, I'm more corporate with, with how I do. Yeah, you're, <laughs> you're more of a corporate guy. You know? With how you're I do. a nice guy I, at I, work. I, there's different ways, like you said, it's about strategizing, right? Yeah, so yeah. I, there's different angles. Because I'm trying to think about it from someone. Because we both know there's people that go to the jobs every day, and yeah. they they get you know they get kicked about left, they right, and got center. A voice, that's they don't have a voice. Scared. You feel me? And um, sometimes the fear is warranted because the concept of losing your job sometimes to someone is losing everything. Yeah. You feel me? <laughs> Some people haven't had. You know, you've probably had a lot of like um, situations whereby you've been beat down and you find yourself back up. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, a lot of people haven't had that kind of turmoil and yeah. that kind of hardship that's built the mm -hmm. you know the skin yeah. and the hard shell and the resilience that you've built. Mm. You feel me? And it scares the shit out of them. The concept mm. of losing losing a job could be losing everything because to that's them. that's all they know. Facts. That's all they know. Yeah, so they don't, yeah. they don't know how to behave. When they go through, like, that's like, like in life, when they go mm. through any little thing, it's, it's, it's major to them. Yeah. Because they don't yeah. understand. Yeah, because they haven't had the experiences. Yeah. But um, I guess, you know, from, from what you said and from what I've just um communicated, it's about having those experiences. Mm. And it's I guess then it becomes natural, then it becomes natural expectation. It's like what you and I were talking about. If you decide on a partner, you want someone that's kind of been through something yeah, for yeah, the yeah, most yeah, part. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah because... Yeah. Um, it'll be easier for you when you mm. both go through shit. Yeah. They're not gonna break down and make mm. things worse mm. for you mm. because mm. they've they've built that kind of shell, yeah. that yeah. kind of the resilience, um, that kind of resilience, right? And I think that's what it is. Um, a lot of people need to realize that if you go through hardship in your workplace, if you have a manager is taking the piss, a colleague is taking the piss, and you're afraid of losing your job, then that's kind of gonna be reflected for the rest of your life mm. in different parts, right? Yeah. So it's best for you to deal with that shit now. If you lose your job, you lose your job, but it's not the end of the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know I mean, if something bad happens, something bad happens. But if if anything, it makes you stronger for the next situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It start you start to build that resilience. Only if you learn from it. Only if you learn from it. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. Because I used to be <clears throat> emotional at work. Mm -hmm. Even I used to bring my emotion to work. And right. my managers tell me, bro, it's just business. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just business. I was like, I didn't think I, I didn't think at the time I was being emotional. I was just ex trying to express myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But my saying that I learned is nobody cares. Mm, mm. Just right. go there, get your check and get the hell out Everyone's of Everyone's trying to get the bag. Yeah. You feel no me? one cares. Everyone's trying Legit. to get the bag. And you just need to know how the game goes over there. That's you it. feel me? But like like you said, yeah, as long as you learn from your situation. So mm. if you do take a hit at work. And if you do lose your job, worst case scenario, mm. you probably won't. If you address it correctly, like Jay said, if you strategize mm. on how to address you know, situations. But if you do lose your job, just take it as a, I right, cool. Mm. That's an L onto the next one. Yeah. I know how to behave better for the next one. Or I know mm. how to address the situation yeah. better. Yeah, 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 yeah. You feel me? Mm -hmm. But the worst thing you can do is keep quiet. Yeah. The worst thing you can do is let people take the piss. Yeah. 
out of you and shit. Unless like you're that. plotting, yeah. Unless you're plotting on a mad thing. Yeah, <laughs> so keep quiet. But, <laughs> but what do you mean? <laughs> like you know, a lot of time people are, they, the manager will deal with you, or not even manager. A lot of time it will be your coworker. To be right. honest, uh -huh. you know, a lot of people not in direct contact with their manager. To be honest, uh -huh. it's just their colleagues, their coworkers that they think that. Remember, your colleagues are not your friends. That's what people need to remember. They're not your brethren. Because they, they, they will sell you out. Because at the end of the day, who are they trying to feed? Themselves. All right, then. Was trying so to don't try to be friends. Yeah. I understand that you work here with me. Yeah. But we don't go home together. Yeah, yeah, we ain't friends. We don't go out to eat together either. Yeah. And if we do, it's because I need to see. It's business. But again, I don't do that stuff because you know it's fraudulent, bro. Facts, facts, facts. So yeah. Um, That's I know it sounds like we. I'm sound like a negative person, but it's just like. No, I don't think, you know what? It's for people that are hearing what you're saying and taking it negatively, I don't think that's a good shot. I think they need to be taking it as these guys are realists. You mm. feel me? Because it's a dog eat dog world, that's as they it, say. Yeah. Mm. Like there's no friends outside mm. this place. Like you said, B-I-T-E, bitch, I'm mm. trying to eat. Everyone's trying Fabulous to look after. Right there, yeah. Everyone's trying to look after number one. Mm -hmm. And I think what, what you're doing, you're just telling people that, look, there's 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 some snakes around you and mm. be aware of it mm. you feel me it's not about negativity it's like it's a fact of life yeah. i had some <laughs> bro mm. i've seen it too many times but the stories mm. that i tell you mm. i don't even like to say this but it's always from the africans yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> but, and it's not it's from your own people that mm. you trust like but like bro they don't bro just just stay away from people yeah just say hi and bye bro yeah. i'm telling you it will save your life yeah. because they all they can say is i think this person is rude mm. Yeah, that's because they don't know no better. Yeah. But they can't say what? That you don't do your job. You know what's interesting about that, yeah? Um, and I think you're right. That's a good distinction to make, you know? Like, just because, you know, um, people are kicking you down and taking the piss doesn't mean you shouldn't speak up. Speak up, but keep doing your job. Yeah. Just do what you're supposed mm. to do and do it right. So you mm. always have a leg to stand that's on. That's it. As long as you're doing your job right, no yeah. one can say nothing to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Facts. You You've facts. always got something to reference to. And that's it's, it. It's interesting because I had a similar situation when I was working in sexual health with one of my homegirls. Mm. And um, she was one of my colleagues and she basically, they always find her to be cheeky. They find her to be rude mm, mm, and mm. find her tongue to be sharp. Mm. Um, and so did I, but to me it was jokes, right? Because mm. that was, I knew her. That's just her yeah. being her. Mm, mm, mm. But to the workplace, it's like, nah, this girl is a bit much. But that links into into us, the racial thing as well. I feel like a lot of people of color, mm. we tend to be a bit more, mm. I don't know, they call it rambunctious, rambunctious, right? Mm. We tend to be a bit more active and, and a bit louder, so to speak. Mm, mm, mm. Um, a bit more vocal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not in a negative sense, just like we like to be heard. Mm. And, you know, we're a bit more active in terms of, you know, what, what we think and what we say. We speak our minds. Mm -hmm. A lot of us do. You feel what I'm saying? And a lot of the other races find that intimidating. Yeah, yeah. You feel what I'm saying? And it's aggressive. Aggressive, right? They find mm. that intimidating. They find that aggressive. And because of that, they, you know, they, they want to kind of eliminate you or put you outside that circle. Mm -hmm. They don't want you in that workplace because now you become a threat to business. Threat to but society. At, at the end of the day, you're doing your job. Mm -hmm. You feel me? This is what I'm saying. Like you you got to get the perfect balance. There's a balance. There's a distinction yeah. between you're being rude and you're not doing your shit and mm -hmm. you're just talk, speaking your mind because you don't want someone to, to take the piss, but you're doing your job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know I mean, and I think that's the main thing which is important. I, I think just the people out there, like don't take it as um, people being aggressive. Mm -hmm. You know, if people like Jay speak up or if people like me speak up at a workplace, it's not about aggression. It's just like, hold on. You wouldn't talk to me outside like this. Mm -hmm. What makes you think because you're in this position? That's the worst one, you know. You could talk to me like this yeah. now. Mm. You feel me? They're it's the about same ones that's going to want help in the workplace as well. Yeah, yeah. And outside. You'll yeah. see them struggling. They're going to call your name for help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's about mutual respect. Mm -hmm. I think the workplace is about respect. Respect to your, to your organization and your boss <coughs> by doing your job. And they respect you for allowing you to do your job without, you know, taking the piss. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? But, um... Yeah, bro. I think, you know, whenever you come back and you tell me about these job situations, work situations and stuff, I find the jokes, man. I find the jokes. As well. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the funniest thing about it. But again, because <clears throat> the workplace, when it involves a lot of um, guys, mm. it's a lot of feminine vibes. Right. That's interesting. That's the problem with it, because mm. my industry is a, is a is 12 hours of work a day. Right, right. So right. these guys are away from their families, um, right, girlfriends, right. whatever. So they just move mad because this is their new home now isn't it these are their right. new friends this so is their new family now build up a testosterone it's just not uh, I think it's gone now it's not, <laughs> it's just, it's, it's not testosterone How? anymore what do you mean bro. so define, define feminine They're vibes just, like, you know the ones where it's like imagine if you like five minutes later and you break oh yes or oh, Jacob was five minutes oh the other snitching straight up oh, yeah, or he what's his name Ra is it Randall for Randall the guy from recess what's his name yeah uh, Randall Randall that's the you one you know one they're taking their notes bro yeah, I yeah. used to like but you said okay, but I've this seen, is funny. I've seen it, bro. It's funny. <laughs> seen it's funny because you started taking notes, bro. So <laughs> you've had to play. You have yeah, to adapt yeah, to the yeah. game. <laughs> 
like right now, bro, I'm a smart guy, but how did I get to this stage? Yeah. I had to learn from my mistakes when I got I got tricked. Yeah. I was young and at the time, I might not be young to you guys, but I was 21 and I was vulnerable because they knew that I just had a child. So I was mm. I was moving like, you know, I, I need to be here. Mm. Oh man, I, I need to make best impression. Oh, so I'm kind of like, it was just wary. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I'm moving like I need the boss to like me. Mm-hmm. But then when that's happening, I'm not understanding that the business is not getting taken care of because mm-hmm. I'm not focused because mm-hmm. I'm bringing my motion into work as well. Whatever's happening at home, I'm bringing it to work. Right, so I'm, right. I'm a mess. Right, right, right. And they can sense that so they can feel off that. But mm-hmm. when you have control of yourself fully, yeah, yeah. bro, you're a beast in any environment that you go into because yeah. you, you just intimidate every single one of them. They want to be like you, but they don't want you to be here because you can potentially make a difference here. Okay. And they don't want you to be the guy that makes the difference. That's interesting. So you, you think um once, okay, you think having your shit together, let's oh, say outside work, yeah. and then bringing your shit together in work, for people that aren't on job, they could start looking at you as a threat and that could potentially lead them to trying to find a way to get yeah, you out. Yeah, because if you haven't got, uh, when you're juggling your emotions, you're not, um, you ain't got, you're not clear-sighted. Yeah. Because your clock is foggy in your head. Yeah. You need clarity so you can move correct. You see, this is the thing. So, for instance, like, um, a lot of people have dreams, right? They have a yeah. dream of, like, a lot of people go to the job and it's not the job that they want to do. Mm-hmm. You feel me? It's, it's just a, a, a it's, it's work, right? Somewhere it's literally go. just a job. Yeah, mm-hmm. facts. It's to pay bills. And um, they have dreams and aspirations outside, right? And then mm-hmm. they come into work and um, they're not motivated or enthused mm-hmm. to get the job done. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Like, how do you keep easy focus? Or uh, how do you keep, you know, on... on Keeping doing like we said, doing a good job whilst knowing you don't actually want to be there. Well, it depends what the goal is anyway, and is the job that you're in does that allow you to do your goals? No. Yeah. So, like a lot of people's situations, it, it doesn't. It well, doesn't, to right? be honest, what I was doing twelve hour shifts. Um, I'm not doing that at the moment, but mm-hmm. I don't like people that make excuses when they do um, nine to five. Right. Because it's not the whole day. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying a lot of people say this. It's, it's what is it? A third of your day. Mm. You, you got plenty of time. Mm. You just choose to do nothing with it. Twelve hour shift generally tends to be a fourteen hour day. Mm. If so I got ten more hours left. So w- wait. So what are you saying? You're saying I'm saying yeah. there's no. You can still be motivated because you got time. You're only in this place for a third of your day. Uh huh. So what's the problem? Okay. Why are you not motivated to do your thing afterwards? Okay. That's my that's my thing with but it. But we're talking about do your thing afterwards. We're talking about during the day, right? You, okay, so during the day you're at work, right? Yeah, yeah. You're but then you're thinking about other shit. Okay, you're thinking about it. Yeah. I understand you can be you can't be fully focused, but if you know, okay, I'm making I don't know, two thousand pounds here, mm. my dream, I need to uh, save ten bags. Mm. Just save your ten bags and get out of there. Mm. Just hold it down. You might not like the job, but you're mm. there for a reason. Mm. No one asks you to be here as well, so don't put the energy in it. Mm-hmm. That's a problem. A lot of people have jobs. No one asks you to. You're the one you wanted to work there, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so just come there with a decent attitude. I'm not saying be mad positive, but yeah. you need to know the end goal at the end of the day. And yeah. remember, it's only a third of your day. Right. What you choose to do after that is your business. Right. That's what I'm saying. Right. Right. No, I hear that. I hear that. I hear that. I know it sounds a bit tough, but I just there's there's plenty of time. No, I feel. And you. you know, you need to know everything has to be um. Just be diligent with your time, bro. Yeah. Just know what you're doing. I know everyone doesn't know what they're doing, but if it's a little part-time job, you know you're not going to be here. You don't need to stress about it. I hear you. So basically, go in there with an end goal, yeah. and that end goal should fuse or should infuse your. A hundred percent. There's no real motivation. excuses, to be honest. There isn't none. Okay. You okay. know, just like the gym, like you make time for it when you want, right? Yeah, I hear you. I hear Same you. thing, bro. I hear you. That brings me back to what we're saying about people going through shit. That, um, people that have never experienced hardship, and um, the worst people, bro. You know, and them dealing with day-to-day situations. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? Like, would you say? It's, you know, because obviously you're your young dad, whatever, and um, I know, you, like you've had you've had a lot of interest in relationships with um with women and stuff like that. <laughs> Would you say it's those experiences that kind of built you to who you are today? Because you know, when 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 people speak to you, or when I come across you, you kind of like yo, let the world come at me, like whatever, mm. I'm good to go. Yeah. Okay, fine. So that being said, how do people build? that kind of resilience. Okay, so everyone's had experience of something to mm-hmm. some deal. Mm-hmm. And then the, even the richest person's had some sort of problem. It might have been only today they got pocket money of a grand when they used to five grand, yeah. <laughs> whatever it is. But it's just how you see life. Perspective. Yeah, that's, that's it. It's the perspective, how you right. see things. That's how you deal with things at the end of the day. But right. my thing is built from my dad was a, a solid leader. So I have mm-hmm. to give um, fully ratings to my dad because mm-hmm. no matter what, if he's sick, he's getting up every single day. Mm. 
Like my dad, people know my dad. My dad's walking all the time. Yeah. Who have money for the bus or whatever it is, but he walks. Yeah. I think that's just a mental thing as well because he just wants to be at peace with himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? But um, again, obviously, I'm not with my mother's, I mean, I'm not with my, my son's uh, mother. Mm. So again, it's like um, not being with her, I couldn't go to my dad for advice right. or my mother because they don't know that situation. My mom and dad are still together. Right. I couldn't go to um, family members because all of them together. So I had right. to learn and be like, you know what, this is tough, but I had to build it up by myself. Mm -hmm. Now, if I can do that, then I know what's the world? Mm -hmm. What's the world really? Mm -hmm. I'm worrying about my son. My son is the world at the mm -hmm. end of the day. Mm -hmm. So what's a worker going to do for me? Nothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, someone trying to fight me outside? Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Mm. Like I've been doing security outside. On, but you get threatened. Like what's the worst that can really happen? All I can do is die. Mm. At the end of the day, mm -hmm. that's the way I say. All I can do is die. Mm -hmm. I just gotta make. <laughs> I just gotta make do with whatever I'm doing in the meantime. Okay. That's the way I see. It. <clears throat> so to build resilience, I'm saying is just. Uh, it, it, there's no one. There's no one answer sort of thing. But mm -hmm. it's like, just know that it's not that bad. It could be worse. Right, right. When right. you turn on the TV, there's people in worse situations. You I might even see. go outside. There's someone outside sleeping in the morning when you get up at 6 a.m someone's just slept outside bro yeah, legit so that's what right. are you nothing really to complain about yeah, yeah. what are you tripping about no you're you right i know it sounds like yeah. oh i'm just trying to be positive and i'm like but it's like really and truly like it could be worse no facts. that's my mentality no i hear that man no 100 i think um yeah it's that whole thing about perspective man you could you could look at your situation and just be like fuck why me yeah. you know oh i mean? do that as well don't get it. don't yeah. get it twisted yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> but you, you know you know you know it's, it's it's written yeah it was written to be like this yeah 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 you that's know. that's your journey your journey will have like you know bumps in the road and stuff like mm -hmm. that but um like you said, do you respect it when you get anything easily i don't mind <laughs> you don't mind but it's like no, i don't mind it's don't not mind. really a thing like it's it. like, you, like you don't even remember that you even <laughs> done it sort of things like oh cool whatever yeah. if you get praise every day are you gonna get complacent potentially that's it yeah it's the same thing yeah you know yeah 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 so like like we said i mean the the success is sweeter once you know the journey was was you mm. know was a bit tribulous just like that spot when you're trying to do free place and if someone touches that last bit you're like bro yeah. i don't even know if i can do it by myself because you actually touched it i yeah, don't yeah. know my true strength yeah 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 you know? yeah no it's interesting i think um i think <clears throat> like i said a lot of people going through shit um and breaking down you mm. feel me? A lot of people going through shit and breaking down. They don't see that their <coughs> their, their shit is is it's not that deep because you know where I come from, like on the side of Africa and shit like that. You'll see we're talking about people sleeping homeless in this country, mm. <coughs> but you know at least they got covers for the most part, right? <laughs> covers, you know. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, they'll have covers, <laughs> or they have like homeless shelters, a cardboard box or something, a cardboard box, mm. or they'll have like people. Um, Sleeping bags. I, nah, not even that. They have people allowing them to stay to to stay with them or people giving them money. Okay. You feel me? Like passing them change, bro. The mm. people in Africa, you'll you walk past and you'll see like dead bodies, bro. Oh, legit. You'll see naked kids, bro. Like, I think funny enough, uh, what's his name? Kevin Hart mm. spoke about this recently. He said he took his kids to Africa to see what, what life's like and stuff. And um, his kids saw um, these naked kids mm. and then his, his intention was let the kids see how how lucky they are yeah, to yeah. be in the state, to be under the dad that makes money, red to turn. Mm -hmm. And he, <laughs> again, this is about perspective. This kind of strays away from my initial point, but it's a good point as well. Mm. He said, when when they got home after driving past and seeing all those kids without clothes, all that stuff, he asked, he asked his kids, um, what did you guys think of what you saw? Mm -hmm. And the kids were like, oh, dad, oh yeah, I can see the difference now. And then mm. Cameron Howard was like, yeah, yeah. And the kid said, they're happier. Mm, mm. They're happier than us. Yeah. You feel me? And Kevin, like, it blew his mind. He was just mm. like, bro, I thought they were going to say, right, these kids ain't got clothes. But, yeah. but he's like, no, they're happy. Mm, mm, mm. You feel me? Again, that's deep That's deep perspective, right? So the perspective point I was trying to make is that when you go to Africa and stuff like that, you see, like, bodies on the floor. You see mm, people, mm. like, with wounds and stuff, no no health care, no yeah. medical care, whatever. Mm, mm. And then we're complaining about basic stuff over here on this side because I don't know we couldn't make rent one day or because something sold out or mm. or because what whatever it is yeah, that people yeah. are crying or because mm. they didn't get the job they wanted to get. The fact that you can even apply for jobs is wild. You know, it's about perspective, and that's why yeah. I think people like you and I, we don't break down when when we see um hardship because we've probably seen we've probably seen the dark side. And I say this in a lot of my quotes when I make captions like I've seen shit. Mm. You feel me? And um. 
the people that have seen the worst, you know, they tend to have the, the happiest faces because they know where they are now and they're, they're mm. very thankful for it. Yeah. And I think that's resilient. Sometimes you need to change perspective. Look at things that you don't have. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, I mean, look at what other people have and stuff like that. And it's be like, mm, you know what, maybe it's not that bad. Maybe it's not that bad for me. And maybe I need to shut the fuck up. Yep. Yeah, I mean, you know, perspective is everything, man. 100%. Perspective. I, I, I would encourage a lot of people to, to go to, you know, places that are less fortunate and mm. stuff just to see what things are saying. But the interesting <laughs> thing is, <laughs> I'm going to straight to this topic real, real quick. Speaking about work and work experience and stuff like that, how do you feel about those people that go to, like, the, the work for, like, UNICEF and stuff like that? We're talking about privileged people. mm, mm. A lot of them they'll go to like other african countries and caribbean countries that are yeah. less developed and try to help them out and stuff like that mm -hmm. what do you think of those kind of outreach programs <laughs> i don't like charities number one charities as a the whole. reason why i say it because it's fraud okay how can we generate all this money every year sorry every day every <laughs> month yeah every and year fixed. and niente yeah? yeah nada is happening bro yeah. how bro how tell me how <laughs> so you don't think the money like going? yeah kids in need they got that that, that yellow bear and them thing there yeah, yeah, and yeah. Wearing that, like, brother or red nose day whatever it is yeah. yeah bear things every year for how many years this been going on since I was a child yeah. since I was a baby yeah. and you're still putting the same advert kids in Africa and da, 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 yeah. just to shut your mouth bro you're stealing that's all you're doing you don't think you don't think the money is going to where it needs what, to go what 1% you know, I need to do a bit more research on that, to be honest. It doesn't make sense, bro. There's no logic in that. There's none. Yeah. How much food do we have in the world? The, the food is business is the, one of the biggest business in the world. Yeah. yeah? yeah. You're, telling me you ca you're telling me, bro, Yeah. there's no food that you can give them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even saying like there's some, that, like, some home, like there's some people that can't, don't have nothing because yeah. Africa is still a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Africa's got a bit It's just that like they show that something. Just carpet. like in Jamaica, you might go certain places, but... Yeah, I love the way that they're still happy though. That's what I remember when I went there. Like they're still happy. They're still roaming like, oh, they yeah. care. Feeling it's like, bruv, the government will turn off the water one day. Yeah, yeah. They're still calm. They're not going on a mad thing. Yeah, yeah. They're perfect. still living in life. You get mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So it's like mm -hmm. out here we're just too privileged, isn't it? But mm -hmm. yeah, in regards to charities, I don't really rate them. I'm not gonna lie. Mm -hmm. Like a man, how many people are on direct debit giving ten pound a month? A lot, bro. I can imagine. I used to sign them up. I used to work for, um, I used to work for two charities. It was NDCF, National Deaf Children's. Um, society and the sexual health one as well, HIV and AIDS and stuff. And I used to sign people up on road and stuff. I was doing that. that was over ten years ago. You feel me? And I used to get good, like good direct debits coming through, man. <laughs> yeah. good but it doesn't make any sense because mm. how much you're getting paid more than the children are gonna get. Mm. That's the reality. Yeah, I was making, I was making a good like twelve pound an hour still. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, so these kids ain't getting none of that. Yeah, you got a point. Legit. Like Come on, bro. They can build one massive place. Do you know? And then they still also be can't blame them as well because mm -hmm. there is people, politicians in Africa themselves that could make things happen just yeah. like everywhere. But I don't even like talking about it because it kind of just annoys me. But yeah, I don't respect the game. Yeah. It's just a hustle. In terms of like the whole um, nine to five um, work organization, politics situation, man, I think d definitely speak your mind people if you're at work and um take your experiences of hardship and take them into your workplace and ma make yourself stronger mm -hmm. and take what you have from your workplace take it outside and make yourself stronger as well no you, you, need, no, 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 you need to start from outside to be able to bring it in because uh. you can't just automatically do it do you know what i'm saying if you're going through the situation cool mm -hmm. but you need to build yourself up you need to build that before you get into that building no no but just, you can't it's not just some, mm -hmm. some people will never experience those things until they have a job. Okay. You cool. feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so work will mean like... But then they keep going through that that, that revolving door. Because, because if they don't... leave if that they, place... If they, they don't take it from... Yeah. yeah. If you don't learn from it. Yeah, yeah. facts. 100%. So that's why it needs to be just built. Because it doesn't matter. Bare people doing the same thing over and over and over and over mm. and over again. Just like a lot of us, we do the same thing over and over mm -hmm. again, but we're not learning. Mm -hmm. So just because you move different location, it mm -hmm. doesn't mean it's not going to be different. It's still the same politics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what I'm saying. You need to build yourself out. That's why I think... Um, being in your passion mm. or doing your hobby, whatever that is, mm. that's going to build you up as well because you know why you exist. So no, 100%. You know people can't chat to you in a certain way because you know your purpose. Yeah, so build, yeah. So mm. like whilst you're, you know, I guess doing your, 
your slave shift, your grind, doing what mm. you need to do to get by. You just make sure keep the vision alive in terms of what your actual passion is. Never play yourself. Don't pretend to be something you're not. If you're black, you're not white. If you're white, you're not black. What does that have to Don't do with jump it? into different suits. You need to be the same person. No, this is interesting because That's again- That's one thing that annoys me. That's why I hate the corporate world. No, no, no. So this is interesting, right? Because- and there's um this is what I was gonna say I didn't I didn't actually get into this before in terms of how to, how you, how you handle <laughs> things how you handle things in the corporate I'd world be fully black that's, that's no because I mean. black black uh, this is what I'm saying when you decide or when you define black okay, uh, okay. black doesn't necessarily mean okay to behave uh, a certain I mean, type of way I be myself yeah yeah hundred yeah, percent that's who I am yeah I'm not, yeah yeah I'm yeah, just yeah saying black because that's I'm black if I was white I'd say I'm just being true I'm yeah, being yeah, white yeah yeah so I'm saying be yourself I don't change my culture at all yeah I don't bend I don't break I don't I don't pretend. Yeah. Be yourself. I'm telling you, the amount of respect you will receive, you might not be liked, but I'm telling you, it's all about respect out here. It's not mm. about, oh, hey, John, bro, I'm here yeah. to get my lunch. I'm so gonna I'm going to cut you short there because yeah. this is what I'm saying. When you have a, when you work in corporate versus when you work in other industries, yeah. you need to play the game sometimes. Nah. You know, this is where we're going to have a um, disagreement. Levels to the, okay, levels to the, to the game, though. Well, let, let, me, let, me, land, let me land, let me okay. land, let me land, let me land. So what I'm trying to say is like... Um, Certain certain organizations or certain fields, whatever, like um, the the amount of ethnic minorities or black people in the mm. top, yeah, right, uh, that the execs, the CEOs, etc. It's like less than one percent. Yeah, you feel what I'm saying, and they don't let you in. Mm. You feel me, and they don't let you in for various reasons. More more so because your skin color. Mm. Now, when you quote unquote act more black. It gives you less than 0.5 percent chance of getting in there, and then some people argue that fine, I don't want to be in a place whereby, you know, I'm not wanted because you know I'm not being myself. Mm. I don't want to be in a place where I have to act different mm. to get into those positions. So fuck it. But remember what we said before: leaders are the ones that make changes. Leaders mm. are the ones that we expect leaders to make. But you're trying to make a change. Okay. What? Listen. Yeah. So there are places whereby mm. the real change, like if you want more black people in a certain organization. Mm. You have two choices. I like was talking about the Oscars. Either create your own Oscars or mm. get to the top of that organization mm. and have more black people. Get mm. onto the judging system, etc. Mm. Same thing with a lot of these corporate places. We don't have enough black people going in there because we don't have enough black people on top. Okay. You need to get to the top to allow more black people in. You okay. feel what I'm saying? And the, the way the game works right now for a lot of these corporate places is that you can't be completely yourself who you are in the outside world or who you are completely black. So quote unquote black, right? You can't act that way if you want to get into those circles. Mm. It's a game. The same way you, you talk about playing games like, you know, taking the notes in, mm. in mm. certain places, right? Mm. It's the same way you need to play chess in these organizations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I wouldn't say you have to keep it real everywhere you go. There's certain places where, unfortunately, remember this isn't our country, right? Mm. A lot of these organizations are not ours. So sometimes you do need to play the game. I, some people say call it selling out, but you see, it's chess. You feel what I'm saying? Okay. Do you know there's some there's some some places whereby you can't get in there if you don't play chess. And yeah. once you're in there, that's when you can switch it up. The same way you you you, you eat shit, so to speak, mm. on your nine to five to, mm. to achieve your dream. Mm. In the same way, some people have to eat shit in corporate to yeah. get into exec positions, mm. to get into CEO, CFO mm. positions, yeah. and then flip it. Okay. But tell me how many people of color get to the position and bring their people in. I don't know. I don't know how many people of color get in the position and don't bring the people in either. You feel me? Oh, I don't know the and, stats. And, and remained themselves. I don't know because I don't switch over. There's, there's not enough people of color. That's listen, listen, no, yeah. listen. There's not enough people of color in those positions to be able yeah, but for I'm me saying to reach out to. Are in the, I don't know. Okay, you haven't experienced people. You understand what I'm saying? Color. I don't. Oh, anyway, you've worked. You that's what I'm saying. That. There's not enough people of color in those positions to begin okay. with. In your in your workplace. Yeah, yeah, bro, oh, okay, bro. Okay. You saw. I told you about. I told you about when I had my induction. I know, I know. I tell you about when I had my induction, bro. Yeah. There's like, um, there was only like near three percent mm. new black. Like, there's not enough of us in there. I feel you. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? But we'll pick this up another time. We'll Definitely pick this up another time. Yeah, we'll I mean, it's a question time, of yeah. you know keeping it real versus playing the game, mm. or is it selling out versus you know forgetting yourself and stuff like that, or yeah, making man. it work. But yeah, it is what it is, man. Um, so we out, man. First episode of keeping it real, no silicone. That's it, man. Yeah. All, All right, right guys. Out, Thanks for tuning in. Take care. I love one.